Natalia Yurkova, an accredited nutritionist and a health coach specializing in food intolerances, thyroid conditions, hormones, and fertility. At 17, almost overnight, Natalia became a very sick person. She went to numerous doctors, all giving her very different diagnoses and not much hope. She decided to take matters into her own hands and make health her life. With advanced trainings, including applied science, major in nutritional medicine, Natalia has run her practice in central Sydney for over 15 years, helping her clients break through health issues from everyday well-being to complex problems that medical doctors couldn't diagnose, let alone treat. Today, Natalia is going to share some very juicy insights about hormones, how they affect men and how they affect women, and of course, how they affect relationships. Natalia, I'm so glad to have you on the show today because a lot of couples, they go to therapy or they try and work out their problems on this very surface level of what are we fighting about, what is going on. And when I work with men um, to help them improve their relationship, to help them improve the connection or avoid divorce, um, a lot of these issues are below the surface and it has to do with the stress that's applied to the relationship, not to do with incompatibility or, you know, anything that we can really talk about with a therapist. And I found that a lot of it comes down to hormones, especially as people age or go through different stages in their life, um, especially with everything that we, we've got in our food now. It's not as natural as before. So I'm really excited to have you on. And yeah, maybe you can start with sharing what you see in men, men and women that's different today in our modern world in terms of hormones than what was going on in, say, a few generations ago. I see that most men are highly stressed nowadays. There's a lot of pressure to perform mm -hmm. and the high cortisol during stress blocks testosterone. And um, with the same token, there is a lot of plastics in our environment, you know, water bottles and um, all the takeaway foods and plastic containers, especially when they heat it up, that plastic leaches into the body. So it mimics the hormone estrogen in our body mm -hmm. and most women end up having too much estrogen. So whereas male testosterone declines with age and with stress, the female hormone estrogen actually increases as they get older um, due to sort of um, um, environmental uh, causes. Yeah, and, and for a woman, what does that look like on the outside when her estrogen increases? It's I wouldn't say it's like if a man's testosterone increases, does it create an imbalance or how? what, what are the signs that a, a man might see his wife, his estrogen is maybe too high or out of balance? So when estrogen goes up, women tend to become very emotional mm -hmm. and very emotionally sensitive. So one little word from her partner could really provoke her, make her upset, make her teary. Um, and it might look to her partner like he's done something wrong, whereas really it's her personal issue because she's really not feeling comfortable inside her body. So um, with this comes fluid retention, weight gain, mm -hmm. you know, sore breasts and could be heavy and painful menstruation. So there is all this suffering inside the female body and um, it's like it's crying out for help. Yep. Um, and yeah, that's what really is happening. Yeah. And are you seeing an increase in estrogen for women in their 20s, 30s or 40s? Or when are you sort of seeing it really getting out of balance and when it's really sort of affecting that male-female dynamic? I think anyway between 30 to mid-30s, that's where it picks up really. Mm -hmm. And um, things that also add up um, to this picture is the uh, female contraceptive pill. Yeah. Because most contraceptive pills um, contain a lot of estrogen uh, and that sort of exacerbates the issue further. Right. Okay. And what if a woman is low in estrogen? What are those signs or is that quite a rare thing now? Um, it is definitely quite a rare mm -hmm. thing now and there are no sort of major 
signs and symptoms for the low estrogen. The problem, if we talk about sort of emotional health and mental health, yep. comes more with high estrogen levels. Right. Okay. So we're kind of painting the picture. So women have more estrogen in their system in their 30s, maybe after they've had kids um, or later into the relationship. So they're feeling more moody, more sensitive. They're not as in control of their body. Um, and then what would be going on for the man? Because if she's got increased estrogen, would that affect his hormones? Uh, with men, as they get older, they get less and less testosterone naturally. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, things like stress, alcohol consumption, junk food consumption, all is going to decrease testosterone further. Yeah. And as testosterone goes down, um, which, you know, it is the main male hormone, that's the hormone of sort of self-esteem yeah. and, you know, it's them being males. Yes, it's like their happy hormone. Exactly. So once it goes down, their self-esteem is down mm -hmm. and there is this real sort of uh, feel inside like they need to prove themselves. Yes. Um, and that's where you get this, like they say, middle age crisis. Right, yeah. What was the midlife crisis? So as – and I think most men – feel that in themselves as testosterone goes down, libido goes down, there's less drive or motivation in general. And do you think a little bit of um, depression comes with that or aggressiveness? How, do th how, does th how would that look like within the relationship or to the female partner? A hundred percent, their body changes. Mm -hmm. As testosterone goes down, they're not able to put as much muscle as they'd like to. They might be going to the gym, but they're not going to have six pack anymore. Yeah. So there might be a bit of a belly. They might become a little bit chubby. The energy is different. I was actually talking to my um, male friend yesterday and I said, um, how does it feel to be 50? Yeah. And uh, he said to me, look, I'll be honest. I'm not as spontaneous when it comes to going on a date or doing something with my mates. Mm -hmm. I really would prefer just lie down on a couch, which is not really him. Yeah. And um, it's not the same at the gym. He needs to have a coffee before he trains. Mm -hmm. So it really does change. Um, and obviously sexually, it you know, it's completely different. There might be not as much desire mm -hmm. or it might not last as long or it's much harder to get it all started in bed. So it's and, completely different. And that's different. a big issue for men because, you know, there's so much of this external conditioning that you are a man, basically, you know, to say 100%. crudely, if you can get it up just looking at a tree or a rock or something like that, right? So there's this huge misconception. Um, and it's interesting that you mentioned the age 50 because I have this theory that a lot of men come into spiritual wisdom or even maturity at 50 um, and it could be because of that drive going down so I don't necessarily think it's all negative um, but because we're not really educated on hormones on our emotions what affects us our health then we don't really know what to do with these things and you know how to bring that stuff into balance definitely it's sort of the time to start looking within yeah and and i don't think it's so bad that a man cannot necessarily you know feel sexual straight away um it might bring the relationship into balance with his partner um but on that note how does estrogen usually affect a woman's libido does it make her more aroused or what, what does that do Look, because of high estrogen, women get more fluid retention, mm -hmm. they gain weight. It really affects their moods, not in a positive way because yeah. they become so sensitive. They can be too sensitive to touch. Like if their partner touches their breasts, it mm -hmm. might frustrate them. It might yes. feel painful, irritating. They're not happy with their bodies. Uh, and that way they might be less likely to initiate the whole process or just feel not as happy during. So it definitely affects it negatively. Yeah, no, um, I can resonate with that. Um, and, and also something that I'm curious about myself, which I never took too much notice of, um, especially, I guess we live in a very masculine structured world. And if you're a woman who is working, who has a business, you don't take a lot of notice of maybe what's going on in your internal body. Um, so for me, I never really experienced PMS throughout my life, but it's something I've started to pay attention 
more and more too. Um, and I think, you know, you notice yourself going in cycles and you notice yourself being more sensitive or, you know, more angry at certain times of your cycle if you don't let your body rest. Um, so, and I think it's a really good thing for men to understand a woman's cycles, right? Because sometimes they might feel like it's this ocean of emotion. They, they don't know what's going to happen next. Um, so what are the key times in a cycle or, or what should a man know? And, you know, even I think I need to know for myself, um, you know, how you're feeling at different points of the cycle and how a man can be supportive or kind of get what he needs from his woman, right, during that period. Um, what happens is PMS is called, it's a premenstrual syndrome. Mm -hmm. So um, it's different for every female, but usually it's associated with sort of heightened emotional sensitivity. And um, also, like I said, that because the estrogen does go up during PMS, so mm -hmm. fluid retention, weight gain, uh, again, you know, sensitive breasts and so on and so forth. And... Um, uh, women react to a lot of things, even tiny comments and anything their partner does might really irritate mm -hmm. them and make them teary. So it's a good time for their partner to understand that if their wife or girlfriend is annoyed, it might have nothing to do with them directly. Yeah. And um, I think all women want during this time is to be sort of emotionally supported and, and just a basic hug could do a lot mm -hmm. of um, sort of um, like have a soothing effect, uh, a cuddle and just say a compliment, you know, oh, you look beautiful today, mm -hmm. you know, and um, just acknowledge, I don't know, female achievement at work. I'm so proud of you. You've done this. So that that's what they want during that time. I think if um, your partner would know exactly when your cycle is, and that week or two weeks prior to the cycle when you become a bit more sensitive, they could understand that it's not the time to argue or yeah. react to partner's comments. It's the time to sort of think, okay, yes, she did say that, but it's that sort of difficult, sensitive time for her. I'm just not going to react to it. Yeah, and I think this is really good information because we have this sort of false assumption that we're really in control of our actions or reactions, but um, we have so much less control of our body, of our hormones, than we realise unless we're educated on this sort of stuff. So I think a man's natural tendency, especially the guys that I've worked with, is they sort of start to avoid or step away from the moods. You know, they yeah. go into their cave and they just want to not be present right you know but what a woman really wants during that time is for that support even if she's pushing him away she wants that strength that stability because you are feeling so um i guess not in control of yourself absolutely and especially if you're um a career woman that's really difficult i think that's even more difficult if you don't have the space um to feel your emotions that's when they really come up totally agree with that yeah. Um, and so, okay, I'm going to bring up a little bit of a touchy topic and it's a little bit of an urban myth. Um, and male menopause is, is this a thing? <laughs> is this an actual thing or is this kind of like the man flu? It, it's called andropause and it's, mm -hmm. um, it's sort of like a male version of menopause when the hormones change and testosterone really goes down. And sometimes when what we believe a female hormone, estrogen, mm -hmm. um, it is present in men as well. And with age, that estrogen does increase. And that's where, you know, how we hear men boobs and, mm -hmm. you know, they get a little bit more fat on their body, less muscle, and um, they might get um, a little bit of receding hair or, yeah. you know, balding. And um, they definitely have less energy. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and is this, that from the decrease in testosterone? Is that that's from the decrease in testosterone, yeah. and um, it usually does affect their sexual performance mm -hmm. as well. So natural reaction during that time is, oh, maybe because I've been with my partner for so long, maybe I can't mm -hmm. really perform in bed because I've known her. It's all too familiar. There is nothing exciting here, or I've got to prove to myself that you know I'm a real man. I can do it. 
And then sometimes the thought comes in, oh, what if I had a different partner? Yes. Maybe so. it's going to be more exciting. Maybe it's just that stable relationship and all same, same. Mm-hmm. And um, some just mentally explore and unfortunately some explore. No, and I think you're totally further. onto it because a lot of men, you know, if they've been in the same relationship most of their life as they're growing up, you might think, well, it's not me. It could be the partner. Maybe Absolutely. someone else will fix this because, you know, for men, yeah, that is their manhood, right? Um, and and sta- safety and stability doesn't really build testosterone, right? They need challenge. It's like when a man is courting a woman, he feels the best because um, his testosterone goes up. It's new. It's different. He has to overcome a challenge. He has to push. But after living domestic life, um, you know, there's all these jokes about how life gets boring and blah, 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 but it doesn't have to. I, I really believe that this is our hormones, that we're not kind of like exercising our hormones. And this is sort of like increasing the aging process. Um, and I do really think there are things that we can do about this. So um, what would you sort of recommend to men who might be going through this male menopause um, or, you know, they feel or they're doing some tests to see that their testosterone is dropping? Absolutely. The interesting thing is if a typical male would go to a GP, mm-hmm. um, they would say there is no need to check for testosterone, especially if it's someone young. Yes. In clinical practice, I see males from the age of 21 having low testosterone Mm -hmm. it's very common nowadays and um, it's very important to check that Uh, if your gp says no we can always test privately and then it can be corrected Um, there are lifestyle um, uh, tips for how to improve it for instance a male could do um, squats and sprints um, that um, considerably increases the level of testosterone and then there are um, dietary recommendations and also I've got herbs and nutrients mm-hmm. as supplements that can considerably um, correct testosterone levels. Yeah and I think that's really good information because there's this sort of like quick fix that we have if you go to a GP they will usually prescribe a guy Viagra right but that doesn't really have, it it doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't deal with those hormone levels. It's kind of like putting a Band-Aid on it. Um, And I think because we've got so much suicide and depression, especially in Australia with men, um, there's this sense that testosterone could play a really big role in reversing that if doctors were more educated or, you know, if the public was more educated on how hormones affect you emotionally. 100% 100% I feel like um, it's a little bit sad because when normally when you go to GP they do not explain why your blood tests are abnormal. Mm-hmm. A typical example for instance or my ex-partner had really high cholesterol uh, the GP instantly wanted to put him um, on cholesterol lowering medication yeah. um, but they did not inquire about his diet you know and it was full of processed foods yeah. and uh, high uh, fat content foods so no one encourages you to look at your lifestyle or at your diet which is the base of everything yeah and then if you do need to be on medication fair enough but you got to understand what's happening with your body and why it's happening and that gives us a bit of a comfort and also I think it's good to know that for let's say for a typical male that he's not the only one Because guys don't talk about that sort of stuff. They all want to sort of appear like I'm this macho guy with the muscle. But they don't talk between themselves that, I don't know, they're stressed about Mm -hmm. losing hair or losing muscle and getting a belly. Uh, Whereas pretty much it affects almost every male to the same degree, more or less. Yeah, I th- I still think it's quite a taboo topic, right? So, you know, the, the only thing that's referenced to that, I think, in the medical space is Viagra, Cialis, these quick fix, um, testosterone replacements. Um, and, and these things, you know, and things that are sort of passed around at gyms in a, in a black market type of way. Um, but these things can also be really unhealthy. Um, and, you know, they can leave you infertile and they don't really get to the root cause of the problem like I even worked with a really young guy um, he's about 19 years old very fit very athletic he was a trainer he had his own business um, he pretty much worked out seven days a week he 
looked like he would have high testosterone, it was extremely low. So he stopped having a sex drive. Um, he was, you know, getting quite depressed, right? And he had no reason in his life to be depressed because he was Instagram perfect. Um, and it came down to this low testosterone. Um, and, and the only real shift that we did because he ticked, you know, he was a very rare case where he ticked all the boxes in the health space. It was, he was not giving his body a rest and he was creating his own stress, you know, through this drive in order to perform, to succeed. Absolutely. And also no one thinks of exercise as being stressed to the body mm -hmm. yeah. and it is a very big yeah. stress to the body. And another important thing is we, do need to remember that uh, recreational drugs block testosterone. Yeah. So I encountered that a lot. And guys that are really muscly mm -hmm. and look healthy, obviously they go to the gym, they might even eat healthy, but they do take recreational drugs and these ones do block testosterone. Yeah. And is that like cocaine or what? Oh, absolutely. And even things like alcohol. Yeah. And I heard that alcohol also has a lot of estrogen. Absolutely. It well. It's estrogenic. Yeah. So pretty much if we talk about estrogen, if we will generalize it, a healthy diet is good for est estrogen levels. Mm -hmm. And um, any processed foods, sugary foods and alcohol would significantly increase estrogen levels. Yeah. Um, I feel like we, we need to really start being a lot more conscious of what we eat because, you know, I guess the typical Aussie blokey blokey, you know, thinks having a beer, eating some meat, um, doing these types of things, but they're actually producing more estrogen in the body, right? Uh, watching a football game as opposed to building testosterone naturally. Absolutely. Um, and I think this plays a really big role in divorce, right? Because um, I guess through the men that I've worked with and the statistics that I see is that it's often women that are actually the ones who divorce or create the separation. Um, and this was really uncommon before. Obviously, women have more rights now and things like that. But I think there's also in, an imbalance in hormones. So when male testosterone drops, they become almost indifferent, right? They become passive and women want attention. They want to be seen. They don't want to be invisible. So what can couples do if they're going through this difficult period and maybe they've seen a couple's counsellor and it you know, didn't really address much, it sort of moved the furniture around um, and maybe they're not ready to do coaching or, you know, to go to that deeper emotional level. Um, what can they do on a hormonal and a health level to start reducing the stress and bringing the moods back into balance so that they can connect again? Um, I think you always got to look at the whole body approach. That's why I quite often refer to other practitioners, whether it would be a psychologist mm -hmm. or an acupuncturist. And um, look, diet is the base for everything. So I don't know if you've ever noticed if, let's say, you have some junk foods mm -hmm. and if you've ever felt how your mood is, it yeah. definitely is very different. So and um, especially with our really fast-paced life, everyone is just living on takeaways. Most clients I yeah. see, um, they don't cook. Takeaways have become much more affordable. And obviously the companies um, selling takeaway foods, they're trying to make more money. So what you see typically is a lot of processed white, you know, white rice, potatoes, just a little bit of protein and a lot of oil to mm -hmm. make the food sort of more enjoyable. So it's not that hard to have healthy meals at, at home, even just making a tuna salad once a week. That takes about five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important for couples to go and see a nutritionist um, or a naturopath and, um, get um, their diet sorted and possibly have some supplements. Most people nowadays are deficient in magnesium. And when we are stressed and mm -hmm. if we exercise a lot, we lose a lot of magnesium and it's really hard to replenish it, especially um, from takeaway foods. So it's important for most people nowadays to take magnesium as a supplement to relax their muscles and nervous system. Mm -hmm. And I think this will be really great for men, whether they're really active in the gym or even just from the stress of work, because when a man is tense, 
He's not really allowing in for connection. So I think any quick ways or simple ways that, that men can sort of start to pay more attention to their body, their hormones, their emotions and their mindset is really good. Yeah, and that important thing is the earlier they start, mm-hmm. um, the more effective the treatment is going to okay. be. Because if you've got your testosterone down to zero, it's going to be really hard to build it up. Yeah. So same with the female hormones. The earlier you start mm-hmm. correcting them, uh, the better the outcome will be. And also on a note of Viagra, anyone who's taken Viagra, a natural herbal approach would not work for them afterwards. Right. Okay, that's interesting so to know. So literally that pathway would not work once they've started that pathway. And I don't think a lot of men know that because I still think these topics are not as prestigious for doctors and medical staff to deal with, um, especially a 15-minute GP session. So it's sort of that like uncomfortable, awkward, here's a prescription, right? Um, but there's no education around the consequences. Is, is this a lifelong solution? Um, so so what can men do if they're sort of feeling like, okay, pressured to take um, these unnatural things, what else can they do to boost their testosterone, their sex drive and their mood? Um, like I mentioned before, work on their diet. Mm-hmm. Um, for instance, if they do come and see me, I've got special supplements, mm-hmm. herbal formulas that are going to correct their testosterone levels and bring them into balance. Um, and then in the gym, they can do their sprints. Um, and um, there is a few other types of exercise that can yeah. help um, to boost testosterone. Yeah. Okay. So herbs, diet, um, and physical exercises absolutely can really support with that. Yeah, no, I think that's great information. Um, And, you know, you shared with me because I was really curious to know what problems do men come to you with? And you you said something really funny. I guess it's not surprising, but um, it's usually the women that come and maybe they drag their partners or they drag their husbands. Um, So why do you think that? Why do you think it's sort of the women pulling and, and dragging their husbands and, you know, what, what issues are you seeing in men? What, what should they know that they actually need to see um, you about or a health practitioner about? Look, I guess in general men are much less health conscious and um, they do not like to admit that something is wrong with them. Mm-hmm. So it's also part of that, you know, male thing, like, I don't need any help from anyone. I can just do it all mm. on my own. Um, and or maybe there's also a little bit of fear, right? Because as absolutely. we said, that, that area, it's like testosterone, it's it's everything, right? So there's a fear that there might not be a solution. Absolutely. And um, yes, I, I'd say on average, I would have about 90% of female clients and about 10% of males, and it's usually their partners that they literally drag along. Mm-hmm. And it takes them anyway between six to 10 years to get their partner, to convince their partner to come and see me. Right. And then when they do come and see me and bring their blood tests, mm-hmm. if I do mention that they've got low testosterone, I can see the fear in their eyes. And it sort of starts with like, oh, but I, I haven't got any problems. Mm-hmm. And straight away they start thinking about bad and sort of yeah. sexual performance. So it's that embarrassment. Um, yeah, that shame. the embarrassment yeah. and it's sort of try to prove like, no, 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 they can still do it. And um, I do say to them that, look, sexual performance is not the only indication of mm-hmm. your testosterone status. Yeah. Firstly, by doing a blood test, I can look inside their body and see if their level is good or not. Um, so you can't really trick me. But then a lot of them have already lost all of their hair or, you know, have got those patterns of losing hair. And um, you can see that it's harder for them to get muscle Mm -hmm. and they would mention later that it would have gained, I don't know, 10 kilos in three years and nothing has changed. So um, you can definitely see symptoms of low testosterone. And then, look, I guess we don't know what's really happening in bed. (laughs) No, we don't know unless they do share it with us. But I I do think, you know, it's, it's sort of like this common knowledge that after a while things don't become as interesting or as as spicy and and men lose the connection so a lot of men do come to me because they've lost the spark 
uh, within their relationship, they still love their wife, their wife loves them, but the, the spark is gone because it's almost like, you know how they say about dogs, they start to look like their owners. When yeah. men and women live together, some of the polarity goes, right? Polarity, chemistry, hormones. So it's almost like when a couple is at that stage, when they've been together for seven years or more, once they've had the kids, they've ticked everything off, it's like they can become like housemates. And I think a lot of that has to do with hormones and the pathway forward so that they can grow in love together so that they can stay connected and like enjoy this life that they've created is building up the polarity in the hormones, right? So a woman balancing her estrogen levels um, and a man boosting his testosterone because that, you know, as women, we, we are, we do have an attraction 100%. to that, right? Is, is there anything, any, I guess, insights that you have on that on how, you know, women may be through different parts of their cycle or, you know, just from your personal experiences, how women might feel more attracted or less attracted to a man based on what's happening with him on a hormonal level without even knowing that. Look, I know you have access to tests, but <laughs> <laughs> all I'd say, I'd sort of, um, it'll be on a similar topic, but I'll step away a little bit. I'd say that as women have become more independent mm -hmm. nowadays, I see higher levels of testosterone in women. Yes. And one of the conditions that's associated with high testosterone is polycystic ovarian syndrome, which right. stands for PCOS. And I see a lot of it. Yes, it's becoming really common. And, and just before we get into that, what's sort of the traits of higher testosterone in women? Like, you know, what is she, what are her characteristics more so like? So if she's got high estrogen, she's more sensitive you know, everything makes her cry, everything's sore. What does high testosterone do? Um, well, you know, testosterone is a male hormone. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of uh, on on the outside, you might see this sort of like a stronger personality, like, yes. you know, like a bit of a male, yes. sort of very strong, independent personality. And then you get things like... Um, skin breakouts mm -hmm. and excessive hair growth. You mm -hmm. see women with moustache. Right, yeah. Um, they obviously do wax it or, mm -hmm. you know, shave it or naturally remove it in some way, but it is an issue. Right. So socially and physically, like these more male characteristics. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, and sometimes the breakouts are not just on their face, they might be on their back. Like mm -hmm. that's what males normally get yes. with the excessive testosterone levels. So, um, and you do see way more um, high estrogen levels in males nowadays. Right. Especially with our population getting bigger in size. Um, even uh, when um, companies manufacture clothing, our sizes are getting bigger. Right, yeah. So, yeah, we're changing as a population Absolutely. physiologically. Um, and I think that really changes the attraction because – I don't remember the study, I'll have to look it up, but there was this study done on mice and they basically put mice, you know, male and female mice in these fake cities where they didn't have to do any work. They didn't have to hunt for food. They didn't have to find it. They were just fed food. Their, their life was made for them. <laughs> basically, you know, everything that we think we dream of. And what they found in these mice, in the male mice is that, you know, obviously the hormones change, yeah. the testosterone drop, estrogen, as we've been speaking about with humans, but the male mice became more complacent. They became more apathetic. Um, and, and this is slightly controversial and doesn't necessarily translate to humans, but this is the study, that these male mice became homosexual. So they became gay. Oh, they were wow. attracted to other male mice. And at the same time, the women um, became more disgruntled, not the women, the female mice, and they lost attraction in the male. Absolutely. So I guess um, through the work that I've done with men and sort of what I'm seeing on a social, on a cultural level in our society, as men's uh, testosterone drops, as men don't need to work as hard, you know, whether it's physically or, you know, as a man gets older, he gets more into a senior position. He gets more comfortable, right? And he doesn't have that strength or even that determination maybe, you know, when he was first building his life and, and courting the woman. And that's what initially the woman is quite attracted to, um, whether you like to believe it or not. You know, every woman has this attraction to, 
male energy um throughout the female cycle when a woman ovulates mm -hmm. um they've done um studies and they say that females tend to put brighter lipstick on mm -hmm. more sort of um sexual clothes when you can see a bit more of their breasts shorter skirts because naturally you know that's where you're the most fertile and they're really trying hard subconsciously to attract a partner and have a baby so yes interesting. so they're, they're getting more feminine they're putting more energy absolutely. into they're probably feeling more sexy absolutely right. and they actually usually their skin glows mm -hmm. and um, they actually do look much more attractive during that time yeah and then so when does that happen if you can sort of go through the cycle again uh, look it, it would as per textbook be in the middle mm -hmm. of the cycle yeah but every woman is different it could be anywhere from you know day six of the cycle uh, anywhere close to the end of it so I've seen so many different variations that it, it's hard to generalize it but let's say in the middle of the cycle yeah and and I think that's why this is so you know women can be so confusing for men even if he's been married to her for 20 years because it's it's not like stock standard. It's not like every Wednesday this happens. There's a cycle. So if they're more aware of the pattern and that these are the things that happen, they'll be able to understand, you know, what their wife is going through, what they feel like. So, um, you know, even if she doesn't want to have sex one day, it doesn't mean she's not attracted to you. Um, I think it's more to do with the hormones and how she's feeling and you know, to also just start to pay a little bit more attention. Is she wearing lipstick? Um, is she dressing up? Because the, these are all signs. These are all Definitely. external indicators of how she's feeling inside, right? I guess the tip for male would be to, um, you know, to try to have most fun during the first part of the cycle. As soon as the, um, you know, their partner's periods are finished, mm -hmm. that first week or two, that's where women have more energy feel more attractive mm -hmm. they're more sexual they love their bodies more so that's the time to sort of initiate all of the fun yeah um and i think another thing that would be really great to understand a little bit more especially um for my male audience who's sort of you know in their late th 30s to 40s um which is you know when a relation can get a little bit stale you know whether physically emotionally um and, and this is where I think we start to get into menopause, you know, towards 50. And that's when a woman's body changes and, you know, how she relates to the man changes. So what are you seeing currently um, happening to women during menopause? Um, look, it has changed, um, I don't know, in the last how many years, but the patterns nowadays are completely different what happened, I don't know, during our parents generation because mm -hmm. the typical menopause is when the estrogen levels go down significantly and they're really low mm -hmm. whereas because of our environment nowadays um, a typical female would have really high estrogen levels during menopause uh, in a way it could be a good thing for a female because she will get less symptoms of menopause less sweating right. less emotional swings and um she'd sort of feel better overall right uh but it is not good for the body because as we age we're more likely to have different mutations and estrogen feeds a lot of female cancers and things like that right okay so even though this hormone might make a woman feel better during menopause um rather than it, when it decreases it can be quite dangerous it definitely can be quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. And and what, how, you know, how do we know um, what we're going through and, and what can we do about this? Look, everyone should have regular blood tests. Let's say yeah. once a year, everyone should check their general health mm -hmm. and that's where a nutritionist can help and recommend which test to do. Um, and then you can address it all individually because everyone would be completely different. We don't have just one hormone. There are others involved and um, you got to work on a case by case basis. Yeah, no, I think that's great um, because even before I met you, I didn't realize, um, you know, what you can do with diet, with supplements. Um, you know, it's it's like a miracle, I think, for some people. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, and, you know, just to close our topic, because we can sort of talk about this 
forever yeah, and, you know, right. we'll probably need to talk again. Um, but what would be the advice you would give to either men or women who are going through an emotional crisis or a health crisis and they're going, you know, to therapists, they're going to doctors and they're sort of not understanding what's happening in their life or in their body because this is something obviously you went through at a young age Absolutely. and you know this is why you're an expert um what would you recommend to people getting all these different information from the outside world but never getting a solution i guess to see a good nutritionist or a naturopath mm-hmm. um and had uh, have their blood test done and look inside their yeah. body and see where deficiencies or excesses are and then that practitioner can tailor make their diet um, and give them supplements if they need to. And the earlier they start addressing the problem, the more effective the treatment's going to be. Yeah, yeah, great advice. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on. You've been so informative. I think after this segment, um, people are gonna, you know, men are gonna start Googling all these things, male menopause, but um, guys, don't be afraid because you can come to Natalia, you can come to me. Um, Thank you. Everything, it doesn't have to be drastic, right? Perfect.